Let's take a trip back to July 2019, July 21st to be exact. The final Splatfest had just concluded. Chaos had beat Order 3 to 0. Way to go, Team Order. So the Splatfest ends and we were all left in the dark. Nogami says there's no plans for Splatoon 3 for anytime soon. To make matters worse, a few months later, the planet gets hit with that thing that makes us wear masks everywhere we go. So everyone's forced to stay inside for months. Now let's jump to April 21st, 2020. Out of nowhere, Nintendo announces that they'll be having a free demo of Splatoon 2, selling it for 30% off, but most importantly, redoing the first Splatfest of Splatoon 2, Mayo vs. Ketchup, from May 22nd to May 24th. So what, they were doing an old Splatfest. Oh boy, do I have an explanation for you. Today we're going to talk about why Mayo vs. Ketchup 2 was the best Splatfest ever. I remember where I was when I heard this. In full disclosure, I'm going to embarrass myself right here. I had one big happy crying session after I heard this. I don't know man, maybe quarantine was starting to get to me at this point. And when I heard that, it felt like the first good thing to happen out of all of quarantine. The hype in the community at that point was absolutely insane. When they announced it, this had been 9 months since the last Splatfest. 10 months from when the Splatfest actually happened. The community posts in-game were just so full of joy that Nintendo hadn't forgotten this franchise. Twitter was ecstatic as well as Instagram. The Splatoon community had just been given the jumpstart that it so, so, so needed. So what was so special about the Splatfest that made the whole community jump for joy? Absolutely, positively nothing. It wasn't a cool Splatfest concept, the Shifty Station wasn't anything innovative, and it wasn't a 3 day Splatfest like the Final Fest. So what was it that made this Splatfest so special? So special that I'm willing to call it the best Splatfest even compared to the Final Fest of 2019. I believe it was three things. Absolute insanity, pure hype in the community, and mother frickin' Heinz Ketchup! So this Splatfest was announced on April 21st. And I don't know about my non-American viewers, but over here in the good old United States of A, our quarantine officially started on March 13th. Fun fact, mine started on March 11th because I had to get my wisdom teeth out. What I wouldn't give for those last two days right now. So by the time we had gotten the announcement of Mayo vs. Ketchup 2, we had been in quarantine for over a month, so the slightest drop of good news was bound to light off the powder keg. And the announcement of Mayo vs. Ketchup 2 did the exact thing to the Splatoon community. To say the hype of this Splatfest was pure hype would be such an understatement. If you just got into Splatoon 2 after this Splatfest, I would like to apologize because you are never going to experience a moment in Splatoon history like this ever again. It's honestly so hard to explain the pure hype in the community, but if you were there like I was, you remember the memes, the fan art, the desire to get revenge on Team Mayo. It was such a special time, nothing to do but get hyped and play Splatoon for hours. But the biggest, most influential reason that this Splatfest became the best Splatfest of all time was, I kid you not, Heinz Ketchup. Ketchup just went ballistic on making memes about the team's ketchup for the Splatfest, and I'll play them for the rest of the video. If you want the biggest example of hype for this Splatfest, it is absolutely all the memes that Heinz was making. Big corporations making memes all the time is not a new thing, but never just for one exclusive group for a tiny amount of time in a tiny event for a relatively old game is just not something a whole ton of people have seen before. It was truly just something that made the experience another 10 times better. Just knowing that someone in some big corporation with a massive following was making Splatoon memes to hype the community up for no apparent purpose was just so amazing and really made that time so much fun. I lied when I said there were three reasons. There were four. And the fourth reason is just friendship. I spent well over 20 hours with my friends just grinding out the Splatfest. Nintendo kept the more frequent 10 time battles and 100 time battles from Chaos vs. Order on for Mayo vs. Ketchup 2. Me and my friends got 10 times battles enough to just keep us glued to the screen for hours. And at least for me, me and my friends' final battle in the Splatfest was a 100 times battle that we won. It was truly just one big Splatoon dream that had come true. I'm sure not everyone had as much fun in this Splatfest as I did, but if you had an experience like mine, 
you can see why I think mayo versus ketchup 2 was the best Splatfest ever. So to put it all together, 10 times battles and 100 time battles, amazing hype and the perfect storm of terrible events in the world made mayo versus ketchup 2 what it is. And I also want to say that this video is a lot more opinionated than why Mushroom vs. Star was the worst Splatfest ever, because everyone can objectively agree that it sucked. And that's just because this one was really special to me, and I'm really just trying to validate the people who think the same way. And if you thought that this Splatfest was the worst thing Nintendo had made, that's totally okay. You are entitled to that opinion. There's something I saw a lot from the community post during the Splatfest. And that's what people were saying Nintendo should keep making Splatfest until Splatoon 3. And in the next video, that's what we'll talk about. Have a good Friday everyone, and have an awesome weekend.